What's up, YouTube? Erod212 here with another video. It's time for the back nine again. And today, we're not going to talk about a character. We're not going to talk about a team. We're going to talk about an environment. Basically, a jungle-themed environment. There are so many things that are going on within the MCU. Doctor Strange opened the eyes to a lot of people, and people are thinking they saw the Savage Land. And it got the guys at the back nine thinking about that. What books could be books that would pop off based on the Savage Land and other jungle themes? I, I like the idea. So uh, we're going to start this in a minute. But before we do that, just a quick shout out to Ben from CBSI. Make sure you guys are checking out CBSI's webpage. It's, it's phenomenal. Just some great stuff. A lot of collaborations from other fellow YouTubers. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, a shout out to uh, Co Vintage Comics and Toys and Phil over there. Uh, for putting this together because they do a fantastic job. But, um, you know, I, I think that th this could be a lot of fun, and there's some pics in here that I really like. Let, let's get started with this, all right? Let's take a look at this right now. All right. This week, this week we are going to focus on jungle theme spec, specifically characters existing in jungle environment or in the prehistoric era. Marvel, DC Comics, and indie properties have not seen much time on screen with this theme, so I think the potential could be good if it's done right. Recently, there was a T-Rex shown in the trail of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. That has spiked interest in the topic, so let's take a look at the panels picked from this week. As always, if you have a pick you would like to, commend, uh, to recommend, please leave one in the comments below. Also, make sure you leave one in the comments on my comments below, and... Uh, Let's, let's take a look at these pics. I think there's some really good ones here. Now, first one we're going to go with, uh, Valiant goes with a classic uh, early Kirby goodness here. Devil Dinosaur number one, the first Moon Boy, and the first Devil Dinosaur. An animated show is coming to Disney Plus soon. I love Devil, Di Devil Dinosaur. I think he can reach the hearts of many when Cindy Moon and Devil Dinosaur appear in streaming. Also, this is a Jack Kirby cover and the first combo. And that's so true. Kirby did uh, this this good work over here, and uh, this is when he was trying out. They they tried out a whole bunch of different titles. Uh, Kirby did a few of them. Um, Machine Man being another one that that was being done at the time. Um, they did okay, but they weren't uh, you know big things. But then Devil Dinosaur was reintroduced uh, with a whole new spin, and it was something that really took off. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Next pick is by Jason Shaw. And he goes with a book I was not aware of. It's Kazar the Savage, number 11, the first, Belasco. Here's some magic spec. With the MCU just barely touching this pool of characters, I think Belasco is a good one to invest in. He's got 40-plus character uh, comic appearances, too. A uh, character I was not aware of. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do some research because it just makes me real curious to figure out uh, who this character is. And 40 appearances, uh, uh, if anybody knows in the comments, uh, put it down there so we can all find out. What what titles does this character appear in besides Kazar the Savage? Uh, that, that, that would be some interesting information. Now, Van Denby goes with a classic. I actually have this book. Um, Savage Wolverine number two, the Monero 1 in 50 variant. It's cover spec. Shayna, for her long history in Marvel Comics, only has a handful of variants, and luckily Monero blessed us with this one. It is no longer easy to find for cheap, and Monero collectors seem to scoop them up quickly when they are reasonably priced. You won't find this in a dusty box at JLCS, but keep your eyes peeled online for one. And I did a search today, and there were none listed when I looked uh, on this book, which just goes to show you, you know, the scarceness of it. But think about it this way. This book here uh, is a 1 in 50. Savage Wolverine was a title that really didn't last long, and I don't think that... Any shop was ordering 50 copies, so there should be far and few in between on this book. And Milo Monero just does some amazing cover. If you don't, you're not a fan or haven't looked at Milo Monero's art, go back and take a look at some of his cover art because it's amazing. Now, Jack Cornblack goes with a beautiful Black Panther number one, the J. Scott Campbell cover. First Shuri as Black Panther. It is a Jason Scott Campbell cover and has major MCU speculation with a great cover first. If Shuri does end up as Black Panther in the MCU, this book could go stratospheric. And he, he's right. Um, 
you know, it was almost a sure thing. Shuri was going to be the next Black Panther for, you know, everybody speculating. But then some things happened between her and Marvel and politics got involved. Um, and, and she'll be in the next movie. But we, we're going to have to wait and see. Let's see what Marvel does with this character because that should be interesting. And it's going to affect this book uh, immensely either way. Now, Peter Renner goes with a beautiful cover here. I actually, I was fortunate to get one of these back in the day. I believe this is from like 2013. This is Black Panther number two. And this is the uh, Frank Cho 1 in 25 variant cover. It's got Frank Cho on the brain and it's gorgeous looking cover. It looks like a just a Jusco or some other painted awesomeness. This, this book, um, this picture here does it no justice. You have to see this book in person. Uh, it's like an oil painting, man. The, these pictures, this book the colors just pop the artwork is, is amazing if you get a chance look up this book now jack cornblatt also goes with something i was not aware of it's a back issue magazine number 43 it's a shane of the she devil key this issue fundamentally changed the look and backstory of shane of the she devil much in the same way next wave one fundamentally changed the look and backstory of elsa bloodstone this version is clearly the one Marvel is going to move going with moving forward. So buyers who are priced out of her first appearance may want to consider this key issue, which re redefined her for the modern age. Um, see, and Jack Jack Cornblatt always brings the heat. This is a book here that um, it's a magazine size. First of all, I was not aware of. I don't know how many of you guys in the community are aware of, but you know what? Um, let's let's see. I want to take a look at this book and and, and see the price range. I'm going to have to look this up. Now, the foreign comic guru goes with Astonishing Tales number 11, The Origin of Kazar and Zabu. With Kazar's first Silver Age appearance being in X-Men number 10, and out of most people's price range, his origin story can be had for about $5 to $20. Never sleep, never sleep on an origin story. They are just as important. Remember, what do we always say? What are the defects? Of first appearance, first cover appearance, origin story, second appearances. Those are the big books that you always try and pick up for a character that has great implications to be in a movie because, you know, when the first appearance goes out of range, the next ones will trickle down. So a uh, good pick there for a comic guru. And now Phil Lee goes with X-Men number 10, the first Kazar, a classic. Some people are pointing to the animation shown in the strange trailer as an Easter egg to X-Men 92, but in the same scene, we see a T-Rex running. So maybe, maybe, both point to Kazar and the Savage Lands, which appeared in the cartoon. Kazar has been rumored for a Disney Plus series, plus he is a major key. Can't go wrong with the key without the first 10 issues of X-Men 2. It's getting pricier, but it is worth the money. And, you know, the thing with this book is white background. Book from, like, 1960, I want to say it's, like, 64 or 65, maybe. You know, um, a lot of them don't stay white. You don't get that minty white. A tough to get in a high grade. But uh, uh, such a great, great um, cover. And, you know, these excellent books are iconic, even though the stories were terrible. But, you know, the, the books will live on forever. All right. So now we're going to go with X-Men number 60, the first Sauron. And Phil says, Sauron is also a great character in the animated X-Men series. It would be cool to see him live action. Jurassic Park IP is doing quite well. So Disney execs would be wise to dip into the prehistoric category in the Savage Lands and its original characters. Gives them gives them that opportunity. Um, I, I, li I like that pick a lot, you know. Um, so that's the pick from, from the guys. And I think they're great ones. You know what? Sauron's been specked on for a while. So is the Savage Land. But some of those, like that, that show with the Monera... And that magazine, those are books that I had not really, you know, some of them I knew about, but the, the Monero one I knew about. But the magazine, I had no clue about that. Now I'm going to have to look that one up. But you know what? Um, I also picked the book. And let's take a look at my spec and see what we, we do with that. Yeah. And the book I'm going to go with is Shane of the She-Devil number one. First appearance of Shane of the She-Devil. This character goes hand in hand with Kazar, Zabu, and everything in the Savage Land. There's been some recent spec on this book but it is still an affordable book to grab. Um, when I say affordable, it's not a uh, $1,000 book. You can pay a little bit for this book. Also, another Bronze Age book from the with the white background. So, uh, you know, a lot of books have yellowing and, and defects to them. So finding a high grade might be a little tough, 
but really a good, good spec to get because I think if you get Kazar and Zabu, you're going to get Shayna. Uh, I, I think they go hand in hand. She becomes the wife of, of uh, Kazar. So just a good option. But those are the picks from the guys. That's my pick. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any picks that you guys think uh, we should know about, put it in the comments below. And until the next video, peace.